but I don't know. I, I heard you funny, so you know what I'm saying? Uh, you might do something that's make me laugh or something. Well, I'll give it a shot. Go ahead. You got to hang up first, though. I got to hang up? Yeah. No, no, I got another question. Um, well, wait a minute. In other words, you want me to play it, but you got another question. Oh, wait till I hang up. Which first. one do you want? Oh, wait till I hang up. Yeah. All right, now. I heard you talking about Brian Cox didn't have a good game. The man led the team in tackles. How could you Let have me have say it game? again. Let me say it again. Thurman Thomas ran around him and threw him okay. and up his ass for the entire right. game for nearly 200 okay. yards. And if that's your idea of a good game, then God bless you. Oh, my God. He had a good game. He's a good guy because he had a good game, okay? Get a brain, pal. Rude, obnoxious, foul, and distasteful. The dolphins are cursing, and man, it's disgraceful. Cause Brian Cox and the rest of them are saying, Suck my d lick my f shit on you, mother Words of love they toss in the microphone. The dump button just can't seem to be left alone. And all of this is because they like saying, Suck my d Lick my f***ing shit on you, motherfucker. Oh, but they play football badly. How do you say that? How did the Patriots kick their ass? Suck my f***ing. When will they make it to the Super Bowl? But with an attitude as bad as theirs Say what? They're tossing our hopes down the stairs Oh man! Rude, obnoxious, foul and distasteful The dolphins are cursing and man it's disgraceful Cause Brian Cox and the rest of them are saying Suck my d lick my f shit on you Yes they're saying Suck my d lick my f motherfucker. Oh they're saying Suck my d lick my f I don't even want to hear about the negative stuff. We got it done. I mean, how or why, I don't give a f We won the game. I don't want to hear nothing negative. I don't want to read no negative f in the paper tomorrow. We finally won a game. That's all that should be said. Hooray, the Dolphins won a game for a change. None of this negative missed opportunity, all that old bull. I'm tired of that punk. Finally, we can quit looking at all the damn stations showing the dolphin demise. Should Jimmy Johnson replace you? All that old bullshit. I'm tired of that punk shit. I'm tired of it. I'm fed up to here with that shit. Up to here. This is, uh, you know, it's, uh, the grace of God. You know, I'm, I'm sorry for all my profane language, but I'm just happy that we were able to get a win to take some pressure off. By no means is this thing over. We have to, you know, continue to concentrate and get ready. And by the way, Brian. Suck my dick. We've tried, and over-the-counter drugs just don't work. WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. The Honey Junior. Agarra la miel, Junior. You son of a bitch. The other night, was there a fight on the fourth of... July. Oh! Cause now his cousin's dead, a bullet in the head. What happened? We don't know. Something fishy smells, but he won't tell. So we'll ask Brian, what did you do? Brian, what did you do? See? Not so long He was standing On his folks' lawn And he was crying 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 It's hard to understand It was an accident With two shots flying Or did you, uh I don't know why your agent Drew claims the cops' reports aren't true. I want to know some more, so tell me what's the score. Brian, what did you do accidentally? 
to leave Or just maybe You're lying What did you do? Crying What did you do? Yes, now he's gone And from this moment on We're asking Brian 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 Yeah, Brian Different Brian, by the way Brian We gotta clarify, shouldn't we? Maybe it's just a bad luck name. If you're going to name any of your kids Brian, you might want to rethink your position. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got your Brian Norcross, huh? He just bailed out of here. And then you got your Brian Cox, and you got your Brian Blades, and you got your Brian Andrews. I rest my case. 1208 at WIOD. Happy Tuesday. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, etc., etc., and so on from all your good, close, personal friends. At 610 WIOD, we're obnoxious, disgusting, and we chase everybody the hell away. That's what Ellen says. That's what Ellen says. We're disgusting and obnoxious, even the most loyal, like Bobby and Sandy. And uh, Bonnie and Kendall and her obnoxious, very Jewish sister. Even those people are gone. How do you like that? Hey, it's just the way it goes here. You know, I don't want to say this is an unfriendly town, but you know when Gary Bettman was here for those meetings, the Board of Governors NHL meetings in West Palm Beach last week, you know what they told him? Why don't you go back to Canada, you Jew bastard? Here's a Big Pine Key. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. I, uh, uh, <laughs> I wish you were a good, close, personal friend. Uh, uh, do you? You must be desperate. <laughs> I can relate to that. Um, I, I always... Uh, uh, like to call, but I never get a chance really because um, I'm usually working. But I, we, we are the faithful down here, and I'm still campaigning for uh, our toll free number. Yeah, right. Hold your breath. <laughs> Take a deep one. Okay. Hey, do you know whatever happened to Jeff Charles? Oh, are you going to start with that crap again with that drug induced, uh, phony, baloney, uh, washed out surfer punk that was on here for about five minutes? I don't know, and I don't care. He was a broadcaster like I'm a brain surgeon. I was just, I was just curious. Uh, no, I do not. I don't ever hear his name, thank God, which is why I'm still, I've retained a little bit of my sanity. No, I don't. Uh, okay, and, uh... Jeff Charles, give me a break. A while back, uh, I asked if you'd seen Reservoir Dogs and you hadn't. Have you seen it yet? No, I have not. Great movie. I think I got it on tape. Didn't you? Somebody sent it to me on tape. Uh, is that the one with River Penis? No, no. Oh, no. What's no. that one with... Oh, that's uh, My Favorite, My uh, Private Idaho or something like that. Yeah, it's a terrible movie. Is it? Oh, it's awful. There's no story. It's just... Uh, it's... Uh, just I, mean, I, I like avant-garde movies, but yeah. that, was, that was just horrible. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, did you ever get a chance to see Dolores Claiborne? With uh, what's-her-name? Kathy Bates. Great. Another great one. Oh, that's uh, that's on uh, on the satellite right now. As a matter of fact, I saw the previews for it last night. Yeah, if you get a chance, I'd like to hear your commentary on that. Okay, but, but mainly Reservoir Dogs. Mainly. Yeah, I'd like to hear like, if, if you if you liked uh, uh, Clockwork Orange. Yeah, I would think you'd like that one too. It's it's kind of sick. Yeah, that's right. me. I love it already. <laughs> okay, have a great uh, whatever. Oh, I'd like to suck around for a CD though. Well, sounds like the voice of experience. Well, um... Yes? I, I'm, I'm one of those insipid, uh, diehard Paul McCartney fans. Oh, how did I know that? How did I know it? Here's the family way. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Thank you, sir. Wasn't that easy? You are easy. Okay, You're hold very, on. Uh, listen, uh... Say goodbye or I'm going to get really upset. Hang on. Thank you. You're going to hang on? Yes, sir. You're going to dummy up now? Yes. Okay. Line two, take care of her, him. Uh, take care of it. He wants Paul McCartney there on line two, and anybody that's brave enough to ask for Paul McCartney deserves what they get. Paul McCartney. 
Don't forget those Borders Books and Music Stores, baby. We got uh, Coral Springs, Aventura, Kendall, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, and now the one in Mayfair and the Grove has also got our best of cassettes and CDs. And even though it's six days till Christmas, you can pop right into any Borders nearby you and pick up all the best of Rick and Suds and yours truly and Phil Henry and uh, all that good stuff. Great holiday gifts and great to have for yourself. And the uh, money goes to a great cause. Center one, we got over 90 grand in the kitty already, and we're doing it. We are doing it, baby. Let's keep it going. Let's keep that momentum. All you got to know is Jackie Moe, Mentum. So how's Jackie Lee doing? 12 minutes past noon at WIOD. In Liberty, Paris, Cuba. Liberty, Paris, Cuba. Oh, you know, Jim, Marion thinks I'm at team practice today, and uh, I just thought we'd steal a few fine moments of time together. Come on in and lay down on my couch. Well, that's a fine idea. Don't mind if I do. By the way, what is that you're wearing, anyway? Pasties and a G-string. Well, you look just fine. Now, why don't you get over here and make me feel like a man? All right! Now, take it easy, Mandage. Calm down. I'm tender, you know. I'm going to start on this thing, and I'm going to wrap on it all year long. Put that out now. Mandage, I told you to take it easy. Now, get off of me, you bitch. You turd, brown noser. You check out. Well, I've had about enough of this. I'm out of here. My love for you will always be. That's just stupid. What do you say? Okay, 1217 at WIOD. Happy Tuesday from all your good-spirited friends here at WIOD, many of whom are really into the spirits heavily. I can't imagine which ones. We have an open line in Broward. How do you like that? We got an open line in Broward. God, does that get me depressed. 5249463. So Mitch Ween, our chief engineer, who happens to be a hell of a great guy, especially today since he put on my license plate with that uh, screwdriver. So he's got a uh, one of these, what do they, they call these? Um, v, uh, what, what's the uh, shorthand for that? What do they call them? Those verification things? I thought you're supposed to I don't to even be... know what you have. It's a letter from a guy in Finland who heard our signal one night at 2.57 his time in the morning, which is six hours ahead. He heard passion bones. That's, that's called a Yenta report. No, it's a, a D, a DSX, D, uh, what is it? George. What, you think I have a class one yeah, radio no, telephone no, crap. operator's yeah, license phony, He's not only a phony spick, he's a phony engineer, too. How do you like that? He's putting down those transmitter readings. He's pulling them out of his ass. He couldn't read one of those meters if you held a gun DX to his foot. QSL push. report. That, like I said. A what? QSL, right. That's what I'm looking for. QSL. I only know one word that begins with Q. Oh, two. So anyway, first off, season greetings from Finland, close to the Arctic Circle in Northern Europe. And he goes on and on. He heard passion bones. And a female speaker says, tonight we're talking about sex outside your race or religion. Do you agree with this? We'll get back to the phone line, yada, yada, yada. Then a lady on the other end of the phone line started explaining her views on the subject. 2.57 a.m., three minutes later, he lost track of his signal. He dropped it. It slipped right out of his hand. Damn it. Right in midstream, too, baby. And uh, the guy's name is Hanu... Nilak, Nilaksela. Hanu. That's like Timu. As in House by You, Timu. Those Finns, man, I don't know. They got, uh, some of them look okay. Like that uh, Koivu and Ta Hanu. Is that all they know from? Koivu. On the Montreal Canadiens. Shloimi Koivu. And Timu Salani. And this is uh, uh, Maha Maharaji uh, Yanu. Why can't they be more like us, okay? Why can't they be barbaric and more like us Americans? Here's Sunrise. Hello. Hey, Neil. Good morning. Yes, sir. Um, you know, for years you've been saying that there are no living and breathing people down here. Very few. And I just realized that... You have to search both, pretty hard. Yeah, I know. And I just realized that both of the newspapers down here <clears throat> agree with you. Yeah. I'm sitting here looking at the sports section of the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Daily uh. News both of whom, as you know, are published by Knight Ritter. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the coverage of the football and the hockey. One paper had eight reporters covering the Eagles game. Yeah. The other had seven. They have two or three reporters covering the Flyers game. Yeah. They have late scores in here. They don't put the paper to bed at 9 o'clock. In other words, they're real newspapers because it's a real city where there are people who speak English and really read a newspaper. Absolutely. Not here. No, you're right. There is. It's not down here. Yeah. And the silent majority of the living and breathing down here uh, don't amount to anything. Mm -hmm. The papers ought to do away with the sports section, have one page with scores, and have an obituary section down here. Oh, that's in there. 
Yeah, but I mean, make it a whole section. It is. The people will read it. You didn't check out the last 20 pages. I guess not. At any rate, uh, that's what I had to say. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, you were trying to get me a telephone number where I can get in touch with Dr. Atkins. I had called you one day. Oh, I don't, I don't, can't find it. I, can't, I don't got it. And the one in New York. The only, I got the same number you've got from the book. That's it. Yeah. So I thought maybe you had a place to contact him. And in closing, sir. Yes. I, I still think that Gordy Howe is the best hockey player I've ever seen. Well, good luck to you. Right. Have a great life. Thank you. Wrong. We have an open line, two of them in Broward, 5249463, and a purple line, AT&T Wireless. Pick it up and pound it. We pay the freight pound IOD. 1221 at WIOD. It's another Kendall Toyota exclusive right now. They'll pay you at least $4,000 for your trade, no matter what condition it's in. Who's got this account now, by the way, that little uh, short guy that replaced Larry Podwell? I got news for you, little short guy that replaced Larry Podwell. We got some very uh, high-priced accounts on this show, and one of them is this account that George is driving that beautiful Camry, and if anything happens to it, he's going to be really pissed off and take it out on your short little ass. Yeah. So we better get on the stick, okay? Because everybody knows that Kendall Toyota will give you four grand toward the purchase of any new 1996 Toyota Previa van, 4Runner Avalon, Super Tacoma, Camry LE, Camry Wagon, Camry V6, Celica T100 Pickup, Tacoma Extra Cab, T100 Extra Cab, Tacoma Pickup, or Land Cruiser in stock. And they also know that everybody who buys a new Toyota right now also gets an AT&T cellular phone at no extra cost. And they also know, and they better as always, that Kendall Toyota will beat any other price on any other Toyota from any other dealer advertised or otherwise. They know that. Little short guy that replaced Larry Podwell. And by the way, little short guy, don't buy a house. So get your ass down there to Kendall Toyota on US-1 just south of Dayland, or call him at 1-800-873-TOYO and ask Mark Jacobson if he bought a house. I sure hope not for his sake. This offer, by the way, is based on MSRP, but you already know that, and you already know it excludes two cells, Corollas, and you already know it excludes Paseos, right? And you certainly know it's not in conjunction with any other offer. John Shula, I f*** them! Oh! 1225 at WIOD. So, you know, it's just amazing. This business bears out what I always said, right? Here's a fax. I won't even dignify the one from that, Greg. You see, you let him on the air for a few seconds. This is the problem with you, Greg. You, <coughs> you won't stop. You won't stop. Quit with the faxes already. Leave me alone. Go, go get a hobby. Stick your butt up your nose. Who do you think this fax is from? Okay, one step away from Greg from Boynton Beach, who we also just, just savaged here this morning. Ice. Female. Bonnie. No. Getting warm. Sandy. No. Who says Rose. that I'm disgusting and obnoxious and chasing everybody away? Ellen. Right. It's a hockey thing. Do you believe the Panthers weren't even rated as contenders? In your opinion, is there a truth to the blah, blah, blah? A fellow fan, female, Ellen. Like, I don't know who this is. Arrest Mike. You see what I'm saying? You can't even chase some of these people away. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, they won't go away. They won't go away. They won't stop. You can't insult them. And she says, I'm insulting everybody and chasing them away. How can you insult anybody when you're like this, Ellen? Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hi. How are you doing How are you doing? doing? Today? Okay. Good. Happy holidays to you. And back to you. I love your show. Thank you. I'm curious to know why yes. men feel that football is so important. Because they have very tiny penises, most of them. No, <laughs> yeah. no, seriously, that's the truth. Yeah, it's not because the guys are in tights and have tight butts and they run around. In well, that's a, that's a part of it. I was going to get to that. <laughs> I think that's why women watch football. They have very tiny penises, also. <laughs> well, that's, I don't think we have any. You never know. Oh, you never know. You never checked out Ann Bishop. <laughs> Ooh, that's bad. That is bad. That was bad. That's rank. Now tell me, what do I have to do to make you part with a Frank Sinatra CD? I don't have any. You don't have any. Who said I had a Frank Sinatra? I thought you had a Frank Sinatra. I, thought that's I said bad. I have the sampler that's got one Frank Sinatra cut on it. Hey, that's not bad. Oh, well, okay. Can I can I have that one? And it's Frank Sinatra with Cindy Lauper. Oh, You'll have to put up with that bitch. I don't know about Cindy Lauper. Well, you it's, have to just listen to one channel. It's almost as bad as Paul McCartney. Not quite. <laughs> not quite. And Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and the Carpenters and Herbie Alpert. It's got it's, a bunch of uh, different dreck on it. Oh, there you go. I and like the price is right. It's free. You're right. There you go. Well, hang on. Thank you. Oh, she was very meek. You notice that toward the end? Like, oh, I'm not going to talk myself out of this. Line one, take care of that very fine young lady there, okay? Told you we got some fine women in this audience, man. Everything is just fine. 
Don't forget that Vegas trip. I want those phones ringing off the hook from now till the end of the year because we're going to Vegas come hell or high water, April 18th through the 21st, leaving on the 18th at 9.30 in the morning from either Fort Lauderdale or Miami. Your choice. There'll be two separate flights. We stop in Dallas, then we pick up the same plane in Dallas on our way to Vegas. We get there one in the afternoon on Thursday, which means we got almost the whole day on Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. Come back on Sunday, leave Vegas at 1, get back home to Fort Lauderdale and Miami 10 in the p.m. Got it? Great. We're staying at the greatest place in Vegas, bar none, and I, I guarantee you that. There is no contest. The new tower in the MGM Grand. Three nights in deluxe rooms. It's American Airlines commercial jumbo jets. No more of this charter crap. We're never going to do that again. 599 bucks per person for double, including tax, baggage, handling, and a bunch of goodies we're throwing in. 569 per person for triple. 552 person for quad. And if you want to check it out, call Rocky Ruttenberg. Again, you've got to have $150 down per ticket by December 31st. And then you've got two months to pay the balance by uh, February 1st. Or is that one month? Well, whatever the hell it is. Call Rocky and check it out today. Get yourself signed on there. Let's fill up. Uh, we've got 200 seats booked on the two planes. Let's fill them all up and uh, really do it. In Data Broward, call 445-7740. 445-7740. In Palm Beach, 989-8888. Statewide, it's 1-800-686-1161. Rocky at Regal Travel is the person you want to talk to, and a good time will be had by all come hell or high water. I'm telling you, if you've been to Vegas already, I don't have to say a word unless you're a moron. And if you've never been there, let me say it one more time. You have no clue as to what life is all about. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Why are you so negative? About what? In general. Why am I so honest? Is that what uh, you can't deal with? Well... That's the word you're looking for, but you want to make it negative. Why do you listen to the show if I'm so negative? No, because in the office, one of my coworkers has it on. and, and I, forces, I, You know something? I can't imagine being in a situation mm -hmm. where somebody else would be listening, that I would be that interested or involved, even if I was forced to have it in the background, that I would wait on hold for a half hour or whatever you've been on hold to talk to somebody and critique their show. I don't, I don't get well, it. That speaks to how bored I am right now. Evidently. Neil, but I would imagine that you 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 know the pleasure and, and the softness and the positive feeling of, of the, the affection of another person. I mean, are, do you, so what, are what, you in what, a relationship is, right now? What does that mean? Why, are you writing a book? What do you care about what I'm in if you don't uh, even like the show? I want to help you on being more I don't need I don't need your help Neil, at all. Neil, I'm this in is, a profession. Let, let me say I it again. I need my help. This is a radio show. I yes. need your help like I need a lochenkopf. You know what that means? I'm sorry, I'm not of the Jewish faith. Oh, then, and you're telling me you're in, you're in that profession, you're like a psychiatrist or psychologist, and you're some goy? Who uh, the hell are you kidding? Neil, See, your credibility is right down the toilet already. Neil, speak with Nobody me. Nobody goes to a goyish or a psychiatrist. Speak with me, don't talk to me, Neil. Speak to you Let about what? You. Oh, Let here we go you. with lingo. Let me help you right off the phone, asshole. Let me help you. Oh, my God, how sad. How pathetic. This is your automatic callback service. <clears throat> Twelve thirty one at WIOD. Now you know if this is really in some orifice that some secretary is gonna pick it up. Northwest Aid. What is it? Northwest Aid. Northwest Aid what? Mental Health Center. Mental Health Center. Uh huh. This is really Northwest Aid Mental Health Center? Yes. We're on the air at WIOD Radio. One of your uh, people in there just called here. I think he's in need of immediate counseling. <laughs> Did they give you an extension number? He said it was a coronal extension. I don't know what that means. No. I think he's looking for one. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Sounds like there's gas in the phone line. Okay, don't inhale too much, pal. He's probably busy doing it right now, inhaling. We have an open line in Dade, 751-9463-751. When they start talking that psychobabble lingo, man, then you know what you're dealing with. Even Van Lingo Mungo never talked that lingo. 1232 at WIOD, here's Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Hey, I can't agree with you more about uh, Brian Cox and the... Uh 
and the and the boys at the Dolphins. I moved the here. The boys from, at the Dolphins. The Dolphin boys, you know, the whatever. You know. Those guys, that football team. I moved here from San Francisco about four years ago. Yeah, that was a they, bad move, man. <laughs> But thank God they got a wonderful team. Win or lose, they don't uh, spout this crap. Yeah. And uh, these other guys. How'd you like the game that Jerry Rice had? If you watched the game last night for the 49ers, who had to hang on by the skin of their teeth and nearly blew a three touchdown lead, but still played a great game. Well, uh, how'd you like Jerry Rice? Okay, now there's a human being. There's a guy. There's a guy with class. He wasn't it, spitting on anybody, and he wasn't getting his ass kicked out of the game. And even though he has mouthed off, like I said yesterday, the media when he got frustrated about that big mouth Deion Sanders and said we don't need Deion Sanders to win, and guess what? It turns out he was right, wasn't it? It was, and, and what Dallas, they have, even with Deion Sanders, is struggling, and it's cost him thirty-five million dollars—a mighty expensive lesson for Jerry Jones to learn. By the way, that's right. And the 49ers have class. That's what they've got. And, and by the way, speaking of Barry have. Sanders, anybody know? I mean, uh, Deion Sanders. Anybody knows he just got cut by the Giants? I just thought I would mention that. <laughs> just got cut by the baseball Giants. Oh, what a bad break! I'll tell you what, it's a pleasure talking to you and listening to you, sir. Well, listen, I think we all need mental help, don't you? Um, well, a... I moved here. There's proof of it. I'll make a group appointment. <laughs> have a great life, pal. Thanks. We have an open line on the green line, 1-800. Do you have any warm, loving relationships with anybody tender and soft and sweet? I got news for you, pal. I've had more tender, warm, loving moments with somebody soft, tender, and sweet than you could ever begin to imagine, okay, sweetheart? Open line on the green line, one 800 944 Nine four six three. Oh, and speaking of soft, tender, and sweet, where the hell's a young and a horny? Thank you for reminding me, Doc. See, there's some good in everybody. There's a little good uh, right on the inside. Oh, there's Cole. Cole's got that. There's a guy that needs some help. He's always pissed off. You want to know why? There's your answer. Look at it right there with that turned up nose. That bitch. Twelve thirty five at WIOD. Watch the Weather Channel Cable Network. You'll see messages touting 610 WIOD as the radio station with the best news, traffic, and weather. The Weather Channel knows, and that's why they called us. No pancake weather babes here. Weather pros on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Holy cow, Aaron's coming. I just can't stand that slut. I just can't stand that slut. Okay, we got it the first time. Take a chill. Incredible. We need a leader who will get us back on track. Maybe it's time we had a president who's black. I've seen him on TV dressed up in his soldier clothes. Oi! I heard his running mate might just be James Earl Jones. Unbelievable. His name is Colin Powell, he happens to be black. The latest polls say he's the leader of the pack. Yes! Some folks used to close their minds, they say there ain't no way. But the times they changed, who knows our next one could be gay. Twenty till one at WIOD. Happy Tuesday on your neurotic station, six ten WIOD. Where, needless to say, we're all in need of very serious mental help. And if I'm in need of help, what does that make Phil Henry? Are you positive? Here's Boca. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Happy holidays. And back to you. Hey, I, I, I shook your hand over there in Plantation. Yeah. And, and I haven't washed it since. I'll bet you have out your hand. It was the best 60 bucks I ever spent, though. Great. All right. Uh, listen. We had a great turnout. That was a big turnout. What the hell happened over there? I waited. It was, there was a longer line uh, at Disney World, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was a long line. Anyway, listen, the reason I'm calling, uh, you know, you talk about Brian uh, Cox, and yesterday you referred to him as unsportsmanlike, unprofessional, yes. aberrant, inhumane, a disgraceful jackass, yes. overgrown, childlike asshole. Suck my dick. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what I want you to explain to so me, So what's sir, the point? Is why is it that in hockey, that when a fight breaks out in the middle of the action and interrupts the game, why is it so that's a part. That's part of the game. Same words aren't that's part, of the, it's to the part of the game. What's that? It's part of the game. Oh, it it's happens. part of the game. So what is it? So why is hockey considered so more violent or just part of the game? Where Nobody said it is violent. Don't apply Nobody said it's more violent. It's just a man's game. Oh, it's a man's game It's for real men. Even Mandy said that. Really? Right. Come on, Neil. You, you can't. Uh, that's the only answer you can tell me. 
I beg your pardon? That's the only answer you can tell me? I just got through telling you. It's not a man's game. That's a, a, that's what, a, what is a bogus it? response. What, it's not a man's game? No, what, what is it, it's, a ladies' game? You, you don't consider it unsportsmanlike and unprofessional when a hockey player does that in the middle of a game? Does what? Just starts uh, fighting for no for no reason. They don't. They the don't. The ice. They don't start fighting for no reason. They start fighting because it's a very because fast. Because they pace. hit each other. Well, I got news for you. They do, do the same thing do you in want, football. Do you want me to answer the question or not? I'm waiting. My good close personal friend that had such a good time on Saturday, but now wants to bust my balls. No, I'm not busting. Then why don't you let me Neither answer the question? I'm waiting. You might learn something. With bated breath. Yeah. Well, yeah. beat this. We have an open line in Broward, 524 Jackass, 524 Coxahoys, and one on the green line. See, in hockey, they're, they're out there on the ice. They're skating faster than hell. They got sticks. You see those big things they got, those wooden things? They're called hockey sticks, okay? And they hook each other, and they hold, and they grab, and they trip, and they do some nasty stuff because that's the nature of the game. Now, football, yes, it's a contact sport, but the fact is, in football, they line up, they run a play, it takes about five seconds, and they, uh, you know, sh they brush themselves off, and they go back to the line of scrimmage, and they all hold hands, and then the center bends down, and the quarterback puts his hands under his ass. One of the great things I ever saw, you know how they have those bloopers? One of the greatest sports bloopers I saw the other day, it showed it was a college football team, and the quarterback got, re I guess he was under a lot of pressure, the clock was running out, he gets real panicky, he runs up to the line of scrimmage, and instead of going under the center, he's like one guy off. He goes up to the right guard, and he puts his hands under his ass. And the kid, like, reaches back and swats him away, like, get out of here, you're getting a little personal now. I'm the right guard, not, in fact, uh, it smells like you're wearing a little bit, right guard. He put his hands under the right guard's ass. And let me tell you, football is such a man's sport, pal. How come it is when Bernie Kosar is at quarterback, nobody wants to play center, okay? Will you answer me that question? Nobody wants Bernie's hands under their ass? When you answer that question, then I'll get, I'll get back to you about hockey, which you obviously know nothing about. In addition to which, there are lots of fights in hockey with lots of players, even some of the pussies out there on the ice. Once in a while, they get into a fight because there's some nasty, hostile hitting and checking. It's a real brutal sport. Football is a pansy sport. Just like even Defoe says, a bunch of men running around in silly, tight pants, grabbing each other's ass. That's football. It's a pansy sport. So we don't expect guys running around spitting each other's face and going out there and getting stupid penalties and costing their teams the game. Have you got it? In addition to which, there are some of us who are real hockey fans like me who aren't really fond of the hockey players who are the goons like Kenny Baumgartner on the Maple Leafs and Ty Dummy who get a lot of stupid penalties and occasionally cost our teams the game, okay? But evidently you didn't want to hear it because you were on some kind of a Jewish filibuster, okay? Here's Miami on a uh, Broward line. Hello. Hello, Neil. How you doing today? Okay, sir. Neil. Yeah. Let's go Panthers tonight. All the way. Tonight? Who are we playing tonight? I mean, well... Well, I, well, this week is going to be my 14th game of this week, so, and I'm very excited for the Panthers, and I want to say one thing. Can I call some people some douchebag, please? We have an open line in Broward, 524-9463, 524-WYD. They sure know how to get to me, don't they? They sure know how to butter me up so they can come on here and say, Joe, he's a douchebag. Yeah, they know how to do that, right? Right. Good luck to the Panthers. The Panthers aren't playing again until Thursday, okay, sir? If you would have even been close, if you would have been within 24 hours even, then I might have said, okay, the guys, you know nothing about it. It's going to his 14th game just this week. I got a game for you, but you're probably playing it already. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay. Uh, first Surly time. and hostile, just the way they like <laughs> me, sir. First hostile, time. miserable, and nasty, and uh, unrelenting. Uh, I hear you. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Great. Uh, and I, I just I wanted to ask you two questions. You wanted to what? Um, two questions. One is... Uh, no, you wanted to what? Ask a question. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, about the situation with Pat Riley coming back to New York. I have no interest in uh, pro basketball. It's I, a, a goon I, sport. I understand, but considering the way he left, it, it would be interesting. Interesting, wouldn't it? Well, it's kind of like when Denise Potvin goes up and broadcasts a game in New York and they boo him out of the broadcast booth because they all hate him like poison. I would say there's a similarity, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, and the other... They're just th a bunch of sour grapes up there in New York, okay? Yes, they... they actually... Although I'm not really sure about Pat Riley yet. He may be the Mike Keenan of basketball. I'm not sure if he really is all that sharp or if he's just an asshole with a big mouth like Mike Keenan. <laughs> I'm serious. The, the verdict is out. They even hired more police. 
you know, they get a couple. They get a couple of major injuries on the team right away. They lose every day now. Even though I don't follow it, but I do look at the scores. You got to be able to play above your injuries. You know what I'm saying? You can't go into mourning. Uh, yep. Yeah. Got to watch out for that morning. Right. Uh, okay. One more. Uh, one more question. Uh, I'm in fact, at that's what they call J.T. Snow in uh, Anaheim, the angel <laughs> of the morning. But anyway, go ahead. I'm at home and I'm taking care of my parents, and unfortunately, both of them are pretty ill. Uh, my my uh, mother has Alzheimer's, and my father. He looks like he has it as well. And, he, look, uh, he looks like he has it? Well, I, I believe he has it. And um, uh, I was Well, how do you look like you have no, it? No, he doesn't look like he, he has it. Oh. You know, the uh, beginning with the uh, loss of memory and things like that. Well, I, I can't remember what the hell happened here yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I was wondering if there are any social workers out there. I need some help. I mean, I'm really stressed out. And uh, if they would call, and I just need some positive feedback on what to do because I, I really don't want to put them in a nursing home or anything like that. Yeah. And I'm not really getting as much support as I would want to from my uh, brothers. So uh, Why not? I don't know. Uh, what well, are they, callous and indifferent? Yeah, callous and indifferent. Uh, everybody's married and has their family. I'm the only one who's home now and with my parents. I'm re re matter of fact, I'm not working right now. So Really? I'm, I'm home and trying Sounds to... Sounds like you got the life of Riley over there. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we going to do for this guy, George? You want to take his number and maybe that guy from that mental health place? Although I hope somebody more responsible than that calls you back. But uh, Yes, I hope so. George will take your number and we'll try to get you some help. De definitely. I good, need it. Good luck to you, pal. I, I Hang really on. appreciate that. Line five, take care of that guy. See, you think you got troubles out there, huh? You think you got problems because Brian Cox is an asshole and you want to sit around and argue with some goofball on the radio that, well, he played a good game, he's a great player. Who cares? Grow up already, will you? Grow up. He played a good game. He never stole a freight train. You know something? I don't give a crap. How about that, huh? I don't give a crap if he did steal a freight train. He's small potatoes. He's like Frankie Pentangeli, man. He's small potatoes. 1248, and from what I hear in the locker room, that ain't all that small. That's what Mandich said. You jackass. 12 minutes till 1 at WIOD. Did you know? 610, WIOD. No shirt, no shoes, no problem. It's the title fight matchup no one ever thought of until now. Tyson versus Don. Mike Tyson, Princess Diana, 15 rounds to decide who will wear the crown. That's my no more, you highness. I beat you. Mike Tyson wanted a fight that would bring him the box. That's right. Princess Diana just wanted to beat up a man, any man. I shall punch you so hard, your liver shall quiver. Yes, you damn dick. Don King and the Queen present Tyson versus Diana. Riding right, instructor. Mama, you should have fooled around with a boxing instructor. I don't need the crown jewels. I shall take your family jewels. Ah, oh, hey, no fear touching Mr. Marble. It's malice in the palace. Tyson and Doc. I'm going to put her on her can in fucking hand. Friday night on pain per view. It's killing me, I'll tell you that. 12.52 at WYOD as we try to get mental help for me, for all of you, for everybody, for George, who certainly, definitely is in desperate need. We have an open line in Dade, 751-9463, 751-WYOD. And the reason I say that is just stop and think for a second over these last several years. Just think of all the morons you've heard on the air. Just imagine the ones that never got on the air that George talked to, okay? Stop and think about that. Oi! Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, first time caller. All right. I was listening to your uh, the news break that you had, and uh, I just uh, had felt the necessity to make a comment about that guy that uh, beat to death that two month old baby. Uh huh. I, I, just beyond comprehension. How, yes, it is. And um, you know, I, I hear people calling you all the time, uh, talking about this and that. And I just, why doesn't anyone ever uh, call because you they and talk be to you about? Because they don't care. They don't it's care. They, they accept it. See, that, that to me, and I've said this for the last several years now, this to me is the most unacceptable part of American people's behavior, is that they accept anything. No matter what it is, they just say, oh, well, this is horrible, but this is the way it is, and uh, what do we do now? What time is uh, hard copy on? Well, That's the American public. It's just... You know, I, I moved down to this. We're state. talking about a country that's got no collective values. We're talking about a country that has got no respect for human life. Well, that's absolutely true, and you, and you hear about it on the news every day, 
and it's it's just a matter of fact. You hear, oh well, that's sad, and uh, yeah. people go on and don't and. But don't but if the but if the media if the media makes a big thing about it like Jimmy Rice, then all of a sudden the public acts like uh, the world is coming to an end because oh my God, a little kid got butchered up and killed, and isn't that really terrible? Right, which it is terrible, but it happens every day. Yeah, and I tried to make uh, tried to call and talk to you the other day. You made the comment about that about all those people getting those signatures, uh, trying to get the posters and. Uh, federal facilities yeah that. that's going to make what a big that do? that's going to make a real big difference man do something worthwhile like yeah. uh, getting access to this uh, fbi computer system that might be able to help people find these people mm -hmm. but what good does it do to stick a poster in a in a government facility well the fbi does, the fbi doesn't have room for too many of these lost uh, kid reports because they're too busy with all those files they got in everybody's private sex life you know so they don't have room for the good stuff well, I, I appreciate you giving me the time to, to just to voice my opinion. I just heard it, and, I, and I, I just couldn't believe it. I just My wife and I just had our baby, and it's two, three months old, and I just couldn't comprehend. How about, how about the guy in Kendall who just raped the 18-month-old old baby, oh, his he, own? Because he just wanted to experiment. Is that what he said? Yeah. He wanted to experiment. Experiment. I'm <laughs> Unbelievable. And it's, yeah. I think we ought to experiment with him. Like maybe a bullet through the brain would give him like a, a real shocking sensation might wake him up. Well. It, if we can it, find where the brain is. Uh, it, it's just it's just amazing. And I, I live different places throughout the United States and Europe. And Miami area or the Fort Lauderdale and Miami area has got to be the armpit yep. of the world. The, the greatest barbarians in the history of the human race. This is where they wind up. If you're, if you're an asshole, move down here. You'll be right at home. All right. Thanks uh, a lot. I'm here. Have a great day, pal. Bye-bye. That's why I'm staying. We have an open line in Dade, 751-9463. 751-WIOD. Our center one total is outstanding. It's 90059 bucks. We went over another big hurdle there. We got over the 90000 mark. You can call center one and order those CDs and cassettes and T-shirts at 561-0078. Or you can stop into your Borders Music and Books and Cafe stores in Coral Springs, Aventura, Kendall, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, and in Coconut Grove in Mayfair. And pick up the same. Here's Miami Shores on a purple line. Hello. Hey, man. How's it going? Okay, man. Hey, Texas. Uh, did you see this article that the post office put in the Herald about the uh, about what the postal workers love and hate? No. Huh. I don't um, read the Herald. Well, I don't. That's I don't something I hate. It just jumped out at me. But I, I hate the post office more. Um, in an effort to help postal workers, here are some of the things they love and hate about the way we package and address uh, our mail. Yeah. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of them real quick. <clears throat> They love it when we include the correct zip code. When we stick with white envelopes, the machines have a tough time reading addresses on the green and red envelopes. That are used Good. For cars. Keep that in mind, folks. Lots of red and green envelopes. <laughs> they, 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 listen to this one. They love it when we put our th mail our things well, in wait, a wait, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Slow down. Okay. They mail, they Cor love no, it. wait. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but at holiday time, don't people send cards a lot of times in red and green envelopes? Of course. That's the whole idea the whole point but what no don't, don't assholes. please don't do that they love it when we mail our things in a collection box or better yet bring it to the nearest mail processing plant leaving outgoing mail in your mailbox for the letter carrier can delay delivery this is actually what it says why is that i don't know why do they call them letter carriers not me i thought that was what they're supposed to do is pick up the mail i got news for it most of the mailmen i know they're carrying something more than letters <laughs> and you don't want to get it <laughs> Trust me. I'll just give you a couple more. This is what they hate. They hate it when we scotch tape stamps to the envelope, tape chips up the machines, use glue. If you don't have glue, they'll glue it for you at the post office. They hate it. So, in other words, I'm going to take my mail down. If I if I got a stamp that's like doesn't have a lot of mucilage on the back, I'm going to take it my yeah. letter down to the post office and say, here, would you put some glue on the back of this? Oh, yeah. But, and you got to wait in the line to do that. And they also hate it. I got an idea. I got something different we can put on the back of the stamp. <laughs> That'll stick pretty good. <laughs> they hate it. That'll be a real heavy-duty way to make your stamp stick. They hate it when we hide the return address on the back. Keeping it on the front of the envelopes helps ensure the letter gets back to the sender if there's a problem on the delivery end. Oh, man. Can you imagine having to flip that baby oh. around in the envelope, too? Man, I, Give I, me I, a the break. Cramp, the 32 shit. cents to send a letter out, and they got all these restrictions because... Oh, uh, it over. Right. Oh, God forbid. Sound but, like a bunch of excuses uh, to me. Two, two more quick ones. Fail, yeah. to, fail to read... They, they hate it when we fail to read all the brochures and posters inside the post office and on the walls. They give answers to most every mailing question you can come up with. Read them first, then get in line. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and lastly, 
They hate it when we clog up post office lines. And, and if you want to get familiar with your mailman, just stand there in the post office and look at those wanted posters on the yeah. walls. Some of those faces will start getting look, real look familiar. Very familiar, right. right. They hate it when we clog up post office lines with tasks that you can carry out at other places all over town, such as buying stamps. Oh! Thank you very Don't much. Don't go to the counter to buy stamps. Stick your money in those machines and let oh, it get stuck in there, right? Yeah. Or or even worse, as change, get those Susan B. Anthony dollars that nobody will take anywhere. Sure. Get those for change in those stamp machines like we do in Plantation. They're about as good as the Canadian pennies. Right. All right, hey, I'm out of here. Have a great, great life. talking to you. Bye okay, bye. see you at the orifice. We have an open line in uh, the, uh, the whatever it is, purple line, AT&T wireless pound IOD. we got one in Broward, 524-9463. Have you noticed the difference today? i got all those CDs and very, very few people. For some reason, I get the feeling I could be wrong because I definitely do need some serious assistance in mental health, uh, which I'll work on immediately after the show. But in the meantime, you don't think that some of them are intimidated, do you? God, country, and IOD. Pussies? Not necessarily in that order. WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. You just hate people that use snappy openers for their show segments. Like that one to two hour. There's no better way to celebrate the holidays than to bring family and friends together to enjoy good food. But overindulging at the dinner table can lead to unpleasant side effects, like gas. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Oops, sorry. This holiday season, freshen things up with new sphincter mints. Sphincter mints, the after-dinner suppositories that make your fart smell minty fresh. Hey, I just farted. And it smells great. Thank you. Could you do it again? Well, all right. Ah. This holiday season, freshen your farts with sphincter mints. Sphincter mints, for an anus your friends will want to get close to. That's right, when you fart, your friends will all say, it's a machaya. Ah. 106 at WIOD. Look at those Brower lines, huh? Can that be a mistake? Is that like an apparition or an aberration? 5249463. They all went dark in Broward. Real dark. Even Time Magazine never saw nothing this dark. 5249463. Here's, and then of course they want to get married. Sharon and Nick want to get married in jail we just had on there. And the priest being another one of those great, loving, wonderful priests, he says, uh, I can't do it today. Make an appointment with the warden, bitch. And then he turns around and says to Nick, And by the way, son, don't forget if I can assist you with your spiritual needs. Father O'Toole, God. Right, who are you kidding? Pervert. Here's a lady in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Um, I just wanted to call because I love your show. Of course. And I wanted to talk about the Golden Lab puppy that got killed. The Golden Lab puppy that got killed? Yeah, and the guy was put in jail for it. Oh, is this the guy that, like, bounced it off the uh, sidewalk and beat it up uh, with a bat or whatever, with a, a thing? Yeah. Right. I, I just think that is, like, so bad and stuff. I think, how, how long is he getting in jail for? He should be in the electric chair right now for yeah. killing a creature much more valuable than he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. He should be dead. I know. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, aren't you going to ask him about Oprah? Oh, <laughs> well, I thought it was a talk show. Like, like talk shows, like Oprah's a talk show. You thought, what was a talk show? This, like, you call you just, and ask you about... Just, you just got through saying to me, you love my show. I know, but How I How can have... you love my show if you don't even know what it is? Well, I was listening to it today. Yeah. And I she called it. to ask me what was going to be on Oprah tomorrow. I know. Because... What, do you watch Oprah? Huh? What do you watch that bitch for? I don't know. You have, you've ruined my life. You've just destroyed. <laughs> Any faith I had in the human race has just vanished. Well, and I, like I didn't Ricky have much Lake left. Too. What? I like Ricky Lake, too. Ricky Lake? Yeah. What do you like about Ricky Lake? Her fat? <laughs> Does that blubber turn you on? No. Those big mounds of oozing yellow fat inside of her pupic? Does that do something for you? So, in other words, you're one of these bimbos that sits around and watches these stupid talking head shows and watches all this contrived crap where people allegedly are screaming at each other and yelling and getting into all this verbal made-up abuse. Is that what you like? No. Then what do you watch it for? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me ask you something. Are you married? No. Are you planning on getting married? No. Um, no. Oh, thank God. You're not going to raise children, are you? I don't know. You're not going to reproduce? No. Good. Oh, no. Thank you very much. 
We have an open line and a green line. 1-800-9... See what I mean? For sterilization. Trace that call, George. Immediately. Get up there and, like, fix her, okay? Fix it right now before it's too late, before it's broken. Boy, oh boy, is that pathetic or what? She called to ask me what was on Oprah tomorrow, so I hung up and then why, she Why would she ask you it. what's yeah, on well, Oprah tomorrow? Asked her. Oh, well, of course, in order to find out, she'd have to read it someplace. She can't read. I don't know. So I thought it was something you should have handled. I don't know. But she loves my show. She doesn't know what it's all about. She thought it was just a show you know, where people uh, called in and talk about subject matter like Golden Lab puppies. You are America. You are America. You are America, sweetheart. You are Miss America. You are definitive America, right? You are what's wrong with this country. Mindless, babbling fool. Who sits there and watches all this pablum, who's spoon-fed, who knows nothing, nothing other than what comes spewing out at you over that tube. Howard Beale was right. Here's Miami. Hello. I, I don't know, Neil. Right. Hey, Neil. Yep. What's wrong with her, man? What she smoke? She's a dumb bitch. Well, I, maybe that's it. Maybe she's uh, got uh, the good stuff. I think a little bit too much, huh? Uh-huh. Hey, man, uh -huh. you know, I'm sad. You're sad about what? I've been a Dolphin fan for 24 years, and I'm changing. Changing to what? Why, because they lost the game? I don't know. They, yeah, they, I, they disappoint me. I don't know. They disappoint me, man. Yeah. They don't win a damn game. Yeah. I'm well, so good sure. luck to your good luck to your new team. I hope they win every game. We have an open line in Dade seven five one nine four six three. Like I've said before, I didn't uh, drop the Dolphins because they win or lose games. Okay, I've made that very clear. And people that drop teams just because they don't win the game when you expect them to or hope that you're not a fan, you're just another phony. Yeah, I don't know. That seems to be. You notice that's catching on. It. I don't know. I don't know. Eleven after one at WIOD. That's the American answer to any question, baby. I don't know. What happened to that uh, bitch in here? Is that, uh, is that cart still in here? I don't know. Oh, excuse me. This is what I want to happen in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I want that inflatable to float away and a real woman to take her place. <laughs> Passion phones, 8 p.m. till midnight on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. I don't know what it is, but it's moving. I don't know. First, there was the club, the anti-theft device that locks to the steering wheel of your car. Then there was the cap, the anti-theft device that prevents thieves from taking your airbags. Now there's the ultimate in state-of-the-art theft protection. Introducing the crap. Two and a half pounds of steaming human excrement that plops neatly into the front seat of all domestic and most foreign vehicles. Properly installed, the crap deters even the most determined thief. Hey, nice car. They left the door unlocked. Let's take this for a little spin. Oh, my God. Someone took a dump on the front seat. That is disgusting. I'm moving on to the next car. One whiff of the crap, and thieves will move on to another car that doesn't have a steaming pile of human excrement on the front seat. We guarantee it. Order the crap for your car today, and anyone who tries to steal your car will be in deep. Well, you know. They'll probably get steamed. I guarantee you that when they open that door. 115 at WIOD. I know that's what happens to me when I show up at work every morning out back there. I open the door, and I get steamed fast. Here's a West Palm Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh... In response to the guy that was on there a while ago from Pennsylvania or somewhere about the uh, people down here not being able to read. Yeah. You know, he was talking about, what was it, seven reporters covering a football game from one Philadelphia, day. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever it is. You know, those people up there must be kind of dumb because it takes that many reporters to cover a football game. You know, we only need one down here. Yeah, sure. So, you know, what's, uh, what's with these people from up north? I don't know. They must all be dumb, you know. They must be all dumb. It, it is, you know, they uh, yeah. and they talk so bad about Florida and being down here. Yeah. I-95 and the Turnpike, US-1, it all runs north. Yeah. And so they can and take... And south. Yeah, well, they can take, you know, they can take Hold them up back. and down. Take them back with them, you know. Yep. Uh, you know. You know. We've got a nice place down here, and yep. we don't need them crapping it up. Okay. In response to him, sign Nora and let him, you know, let him go back to Pennsylvania where he belongs. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Let him go back up the old uh, Hershey Highway to Pennsylvania. We have an open line on the green line, y'all. At 1-800-YALL-COME-BACK. 1-800-ALL-RIDE. Thank God we don't got no nose pickers down here. They're all over there in Tampa, Temple Terrace, and Lutz, right? They're not? Here's Hallandale on the purple line. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I'm here to defend and perhaps explain Brian Cox. 
You're wasting your time, pal. No, no, the statement. You're is... wasting your time and my time. Stop taunting the retard. It's just. We have an open line on the uh, purple line, pound IOD, one on the green line, 1 800 944 9463. 1 800 944. See, this last guy that just called a moment before, this guy was on immediately after to disprove what you said. We got more stupidity per square inch down here than you'll find almost anywhere in the world from here to Uranus, I'll tell you that. Did he say from here to Uranus? If your car's life is over, go see Ben Dover. You'll realize what you had was heinous when you hop in and ride your anus. Oh, yeah. You've enjoyed driving Mercury. You loved your Saturn. Now come and dig Uranus. Love that new car smell? Nothing smells like Uranus. Dependability? No one has ever got stuck in Uranus. Take the plunge now. Be courageous. Bend over and ride Uranus. And if you like a car that holds the road, you couldn't wipe out Uranus if you tried. Uranus. Powerful, yet great with gas. Need trunk space? Rest assured you can pack anything in Uranus. And if Uranus is rear-ended, our well-lubricated joints will soften the blow. Come to our showroom and pick out Uranus. And leave that messy paperwork to us. Check out Uranus. Take the dive like Greg Luganus. Bend over and ride Uranus. I don't even want to hear about the negative stuff. Okay, 118 at WYOD. That was that shrink that called before, right, that said I was so negative. He don't even want to hear about the negative stuff. Of course, somebody is holding a gun to his head right now and forcing him to listen to the show for four hours every day, so it can't really be helping too many of the people down here that need some serious help. No wonder we're not getting much accomplished, okay? Because this guy's being held at gunpoint, forced to listen to a show and even call a show and sit there on hold for 40 minutes every, every day. Speaking of needing help. Yes. That guy. Which guy? The guy that needed help, that I took his number. Yeah. Two very nice ladies who, with uh, similar situations or had gone through similar situations, called up and took his number, and they're going to talk to him. All and right. Help him out. Thank God. See? See, there are people out there that think that this is nothing more than a show for assholes, okay? Well, let me just tell you right now, the reason this show is on in this market is because there are a preponderance of assholes in this town, and that's why we perform a service. But once in a while, just by accident, just through a miracle, we just slip into a bucket of stuff, and we do something good for somebody. Like saving all these people's lives with the Atkins diet, for which I get zero in return, not even a thank you for most of those people. Like Mitch Lewis. Like Mitch Lewis. Who tells Suds, oh, by the way, I lost 40 pounds and my life is, is worth living now. Mitch Lewis, who don't know his puppet from his... Rectum. Exactly. How do you like that? Saved his life. Not slanting, lady. Saved her life. And after finally embarrassing her to call after months of begging and pleading, she finally said, thank you. But that's okay. I can handle that. Once in a great, great while, just by osmosis, just through the accident of being alive, we do something positive for somebody, okay? Doctor... And by the way, anybody who would go to a Goyish doctor, they need serious... Th I mean, there are probably some people who go to an Italian doctor. Can you imagine going to an Italian doctor who's probably overweight and needs your diet? Yeah, my doctor's Italian. You got a problem with Italians, huh? You assholes. I better like Italians. 121 at WYOD for... Rectum. You better jump and run. You got the hidey hide, I don't know. The old man is on the commode. He got the spare tire in his middle. He's always hauling a healthy load. He had a blue plate special with three fried beans. And you can hear his crack.
God, if somebody just buy him some of those sphincter mints. He'd be a lot of fun at a party, I'll tell you that. Oh, well, well, sometimes there's like a little uh, afterbirth there at the end of those, and you don't want to step on it. 126 at WIOD. Happy holidays, man. There's that holiday feeling in the air in this joint, like just about everybody's getting ready to bail out of here and maybe not come back. If you missed the beginning of the show, I have an award-winning letter from Jack E. Lee at uh, Freehold Raceway here that would make hair grow in Uranus. I'm telling you, it was just unbelievable. Talk about their licking all over you one day, and then you look at him cross-eyed. Although it was nothing new, I've been ripping him an ass for months ever since he started bugging me and calling his show. I've done everything but tell him, hey, you're a major asshole, go away. In fact, I think I did tell him that, and it still didn't work. But evidently, I got to him, baby, because I got a letter here that I'm going to take home and put in a frame. I'm framing it. Here's a lady mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I just want to tell you that anybody who thinks your show isn't good, they're wrong. You have a fantastic show. Yes, I do. And they listen to it in the Bahamas. My son, Philip Russell, he calls me to tell me things that you've said in case I don't get you clearly over here. Come on. Right. And um, the guy from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Hit I-95 and head north. Don't come back. We're too smart for you down here. We're too smart. That's right. Like that lady from Palm Beach that called before. Are they I don't know lady? Oh, okay. I don't know. And to the Italian, the fat Italian doctor. Yes. Get a magnifying glass and a pair of tweezers. Find your penis and have a good day. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Put uh, her in the trunk when that guy heads back to uh, Hershey. Oh, my God. Are they uh, something or else, huh? There, my doctor no longer happens to be so fat, and I got news for her, sweetheart. I bet his penis is bigger than yours is, huh? Marginally. She's knocking my doctor. I'm just making a little joke here, and they're getting all surly. I'm the one that's so negative and hostile, right? My good psycho, psycho babbling shrink friend over there at the Northwest Mental Health Center. Boy, oh boy, we ought to be taking numbers. This man ought to be making house calls. Of course, I understand he hangs around too long. He's real reluctant to say, boy, boy. Because those people are getting uh, caught nowadays. Here's Miami. Hello. Yo. Yes, sir. What's up, man? I got a con. You uh, you made a comment earlier about uh, Marino going back to the football thing. Now you made a comment about Marino about he won every game single handedly. No, I did not. You I made- said he has won many games single handedly. Okay. Yes. But how could you say that when when very uh, easily? Because it happens to be a fact. Okay. Okay. But how many how many times has he pulled the Dolphins out in the last two minutes of a game with pinpoint passes, marching the team downfield? In fact, that one game a couple of weeks ago when he even ran with his bad knee and bad ankle and his uh, aching... Uh, what? Once every 15 years. Well, why, what is his run? He doesn't even run. That's I'm, my point. The man is a statue. He can't run because he's got bad knees. But the point I'm trying to make to you is even with the bad knees, he ran for the first down in that game and kept the drive going, and the Dolphins pulled it out, thanks mostly to him. All right, you're correct. You're correct. I mean, but what I'm saying So, in is, other words, you don't want to give him credit. Is that what you're saying? He's a bad guy now or what? What's, no, what's his problem? What I'm saying too is... Too light-complected or what? No, what I'm saying is that they give too much credit to Marino and not enough credit to the receivers that die for the ball. They take the Let me hit. tell you something. If I would like to have $100 in my pocket right now for every perfect pass he's thrown this year that was dropped, especially by Irving Fryer. If you want to tell me... OJ, that, that's right. That's exactly right. What games are you watching? I've seen every what game. About the, what about... The, what about... The, I remember... Um, if you want to tell all me... All the interceptions he's been throwing and losing the game. That's the reason we lost the game He uh, threw one. Sunday. He threw one. So did Jim he threw Kelly. One. So did Jim Kelly. Both both resulted no, no, no. in the points. No, no, no. He threw it directly to the guy. I mean, how could he miss? The guy couldn't. It was like he was throwing it to the tight end. Yeah, and how about the interception Jim Kelly threw right to the guy, too? Well, that's what I'm saying. The offense can't capitalize. So, in other words, he's not perfect. Is that what you're saying? How about the defense that's I'm been given up? That how about the defense overrated. that's been given up? He's overrated. overrated. Who, would you, who would you like to have a quarterback? That's the reason we ain't got a Super Bowl ring, because of Dan Marino and yeah. Stula. We, you, depend you know something? It's Shula. probably that great running game that probably is what's going to get us in the Super Bowl. Well, see, 40, that's what I'm 42 yards rushing. Okay, but we don't 42 get... yards rushing. Bernie Parmalee couldn't have gone through a, through a piece of paper okay, on but Sunday. Okay, what, what about Irving Spikes? We don't even play Irving Spikes. He's see? too busy beating up his wife. Irving Spikes? Irving Spikes is the guy who was on inactive. Let me say it again. Irving Spikes is too Terry busy Kirby. beating up that, his that was wife. Terry Kirby, no, that bro. was not Terry Kirby, sir. Terry You're Kirby. absolutely wrong. You're full of crap. It was not Terry Kirby. It was Irving Spikes. I'll bet you every dime in your pocket on it, okay? And multiply times 100, it was Irving Spikes. See, you don't know your crap. You just no, talk you don't loud. Know your crap. Oh, I see. It was, it was uh, Terry Kirby, huh? Then why was he inactive? Terry Kirby. 
Who is inactive? Terry, I mean, uh, Eric Fike. Because they put him on the inactive list because he got in trouble with the police for pulling a goddamn unregistered gun and because he had been beating up his wife and he's a piece of crap. That's why. Any other questions? You better go learn your crap, mister. You don't know your crap. You're, get him in touch with a bridge tender. You better learn your crap before you start opening up a big mouth. It was Irv it was Terry Kirby beat up Irving Spikes' wife. Right. Right. No, it was Warren Moon, I think, done it. It was Bobby Cox that done it. The dog done it. It was Brian Blades done it. How do you like that? This business with knocking Dan Marino. See, if Dan Marino were black, this guy would be all over him like stink on stuff. But it's the white guys on a the team. They're the problem. I'm surprised they didn't bring up that stupid penalty they got. Who the hell's that number 93, George? Come on. That got that horrible offsides penalty that kept that Buffalo drive alive. That was the turning point in the game. How come nobody's pointing the finger at him? He's a white guy. I can't think of his name. And he's probably lucky that we can't. Here's Miami. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. It's Neil? Yes, I am. Okay, I just have one comment about the Dolphins' um, defense ever since all-pro linebacker John Offadoff retired. The defense has been going down. That's right. And they've been no giving up 30 and 40, giving up 30 and 40 points to girls' teams like right. New Orleans and the Patriots. They've been giving up all these points. In fact, most of those games they played during that stretch, the team against them got their high total of points for the whole season. Right. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, was Brian Cox there, was there when um, Offadoff was there? No. Oh, that's probably why he'd ask Well, I mean, he was, yeah, he was, because uh, Offerdahl, like, uh, two years ago, I mean, Offerdahl didn't really play. I mean, Offerdahl, the last couple of years he was in, he was mostly out. Right, but when he played, he gave one uh, 100% and more. Yes, he did. I mean, he, he was And also, also, he did not spit on the fans, and no, he did not, did not no, get he, into a bunch of fist fights no, and get no. stupid he, penalties. He got, Brian Cox ain't like that because they feel that they have to rely on him. But he'll learn sooner or later when he's out of there. Yeah, which will be soon. Yes, sir. So okay, my... I know your show. Okay, pal. Thank you. See ya. Open line in Dade, 7519463. This whole, this whole dolphin business goes to show you, it's really fascinating. First of all, I keep telling you, it's only a football game, but you don't want to understand, because to some of you, it's your whole life, which is very sad. And number two, how many people in this town really watch those games objectively and see what's really happening? Very, very few. Long before there was any feud with Shula, Brian Cox, anybody else in this radio station, or yours truly, or Phil Henry, or anybody else. Long before that, I was coming on here and bemoaning the fact that I would spend all of that money for those 50-yard line seats and go out there and watch a grotesque and embarrassing performance. No pass rush, which you'll notice again this year, there is no pass rush. Marino was sacked three or four times by the Bills. Kelly was sacked how many times? Oh! The big O, none. And most of the time, Kelly could have stood back there and written a letter to Grandma and then thrown the ball. And only for the fact that he's got that bad arm, many of the passes he came up short or he just uh, threw poorly. But no pass rush, no pressure whatsoever, none. And no running game. And they can't stop the run. Those are the same three things I've been screaming about for the last five or six years. Has anything changed? No. No. Some of the faces, some of the names, they don't got Bobby Humphreys no more. They don't got Sammy Smith no more. Those two guys who were running, uh, were they running the ball or running drugs? They don't not got Cleveland boy Gary anymore because they're foreclosing on his house and on his ass and on his uniform. It's the same old tired crap, including the coach, especially the coach. That's where it comes from. But so long as there's ass kissers like Jimmy Cephalo and Jim Mandich around, he'll uh, be here for a long time, okay? As long as there are people willing to cover up the fact he's a doddering old man who's lost it. He can't control these guys. They can't make the personnel changes to solve the problems. It's the same, same garbage every single year. No running game. They can't stop the run. Their secondary sucks, by the way. We don't want to mention that about Terrell Buckley and Gene Atkins. And they can't run the ball. They cannot run the ball. They cannot run the ball. 42 yards of which 16 was by, was by Keith Byers. And you notice a couple of plays there late in the game when Keith Byers was like exploding, making, and they don't want to give him the ball. See, he was doing a little bit too good. They'll make Bernie Parmalee look bad and Terry Kirby. So God forbid, don't give Keith Byers the ball because he's really too good. 135, but hey, what do I know? Because I'm only watching the same game you are. 135 at WIOD. Oh! It is the action movie for Christmas. In the tradition of films like Wild Bunch and The Magnificent Seven, Make a Buck Movies presents The Wise Three.
Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sly Stallone, and Bruce Willis are the three wise men on a mission to the manger. And they'll get there, no matter what it takes. I see the star. Now I make you see stars. Oh, no. It's non-stop action as the wise three make their way through the desert on the mission to end all missions. C4. Uh, like, uh, check. Uzi? Uh, check again. Mer? Come on, let's go. We can't let the shepherds get there first. Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Willis, the wise three. It's the holiday movie that makes no frankincense at all. I'm a wise man. Uh -huh. I'll bet 139, 21 till 2 at WIOD. The dumbing of America is nearly complete. Stay tuned, stand by. Here's Deerfield Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, I was out of town. I'm a, I'm a Bills fan. I'm from Buffalo. Yes, sir. I live down here in South Florida. Well, congratulations, sir. <laughs> and nice job. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, I was out of town until late last night, and I was looking forward to getting all the uh, all the reaction to the uh, the game this weekend on the radio. Yeah. But I can't, just from listening to you while I was holding, I cannot see how anybody could say that this team, the Dolphins, doesn't need a real a real house clean and start right. with the top right i mean uh, uh marv, Le marv levy has out coached don shula in almost every game they've played head-to-head -head especially and of course when people look back and see that miami has never ever in the history of the two franchises beaten the bills in december when it really counts that has to tell you something it does tell you something and the and and even even jeff cross of the dolphins said after the game that he knew the Buffalo coaches couldn't believe how easy it was to keep running the same plays over and over again, like that end around they kept running with Steve Tasker. They just kept running it over and over again, and almost every time it worked because the Dolphins make no adjustments. They go out there like they got mental lockjaw. Exactly. And this, now, and you're saying uh, this this from a coach, Marv Levy, who's been out coached himself on a few big games uh, in his uh, tenure with the yeah. Bills. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anybody thinks that he's the greatest uh, field tactician. Uh, Not out the there. greatest, but when he's up against Shula, man, it's no contest. Exactly, which ought to tell you something about Shula right there. Right. Anyway, uh, well, listen, it's good uh, listening to you. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. Yes, sir. I want to send my brother, who lives up in Buffalo. I'm uh, I'm recording this, and I want to send him. That song you've been playing the last week or so about the... Uh, you don't mean the foul mouth Dolphins by any chance, yes, do you? Yes, yes. How did I know? <laughs> Have a great life, pal. That's a great one. Will you play it for me? I sure will. Thanks, Neil. If you say goodbye. All right, see ya. Like I said, if you say goodbye. Because saying goodbye never means... Rude, obnoxious, foul, and distasteful. The dolphins are cursing, and man, it's disgraceful. Because Brian Cox and the rest of them are saying... Suck my d***! Lick my f shit on you, mother f Words of love they toss in the microphone. The dump button just can't seem to be left alone. And all of this is because they like saying, Suck my d lick my f shit on you, mother f Oh, but they play football badly. How do you say that? How did the Patriots kick their ass? Suck my d When will they make it to the Super Bowl? But with an attitude as bad as theirs, Say what? they're tossing our hopes down the stairs. Oh, man. Rude, obnoxious, foul, and distasteful. The dolphins are cursing, and man, it's disgraceful. Because Brian Cox and the rest of them are saying, Suck my d lick my b shit on you. Yes, they're saying, Suck my d lick my b motherfucker. Oh, they're saying, Suck my d lick my b and by the way, Brian, how's your mama? 143 at WLD. Here's something positive going on tomorrow in the Sawgrass, no less. Florida Panthers, Mark Fitzpatrick and Rob Niedermeyer are going to be there from 3.30 uh, to 5 tomorrow afternoon. And they invite you to bring an unwrapped toy to donate to Toys for Tots. And in exchange, you'll get an autograph from uh, Mark Fitzpatrick or Senator Rob Niedermeyer. It says, or... Not both, okay? I want to clarify, because if you're going to start uh, bugging them both, Rob Niedermeyer will spear you right in the puss, okay? 
It's going to be at the Sawgrass Mills Mall tomorrow, 3.30 to 5, and the autograph signing will take place in the Blue Dolphins section of the mall. And speaking of hockey, tomorrow is a big hockey day for us. we got Jeff Rimmer, the voice of the Panthers on TV, which isn't saying much. But we got Don Cherry. we got Grapes from Hockey Night in Canada, from the Boston Bruins, from the Rochester Amherst, from all that good stuff. It'll be good. And we might even have, actually have like a whole bunch of tickets to give away. Let's find out who's really on top of stuff. Let's see who brings more freebies tomorrow, Jeff Moss or Rimmer, okay? The pressure is on. Let's see who really comes through for me. Let's see who our real friend is, George. Here's uh, North Miami. Hello. 93, Trace Armstrong. Trace Armstrong, who with that great offsides. Did you see that play, sir? Was, you hit it right in the head. That was a turning, turning, was a turning point, point of, the of the game. game. It kept the drive, drive alive, alive for the Bills. Drive and alive. nobody even talks about that. And that guy went, first down. That's right. Only it wasn't even Red Cashin, and he still went, no. first down. He was in the other game, the Seattle game. He was first down in the, in the other game, the Seattle uh, He was in the Seattle game? game? The no, Seattle. no. Was, wasn't he? No, what, 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 what game was he? Was he was on that he day. He was in the Dallas game. Dallas Giants, right? Dallas and Giants. I knew I saw And what, what a shame that was, man. The oh. Giants. God. Had him right where they wanted him, and right I ju- you could were. just smell it coming. Though you just uh, knew that Dallas lucky. would wiggle off the hook. They were lucky, lucky is right. Lucky, lucky. Yep. And also, I've been listening the past couple of days. Where did these people come off? If, if Dan Marino wasn't around the past eleven years, can you a imagine joke. how mediocre t- this how, team would what, be? Let me ask you: the last three years, how would you like to have had Bernie Kosar as the starting quarterback, oh, throwing please. those wounded ducks? We wouldn't even be five hundred. That's right. I mean, that guy... They is, would make the Jets look like Super Bowl champs. Overrated. That's how bad how, they would be. How could somebody possibly say but the man that, is overrated? Doesn't that go to show you what an ungrateful bunch of bastards they Absolutely. are in this town? Absolutely ungrateful. I mean, with, with Shula, at least, you know, you appreciate what he did 20 years exactly. ago, but the fact is time is running time by. Is he's, he's, but Marino is still pulling still. games out of his Gimpy ass. He goes legs. out there hurt. The Gimpy guy's got, he's got balls him? the size of right. elephant balls, and this guy still gets knocked. Oh, it's all Danny's fault. Over, yeah, overrated. Overrated. My ass, yeah. Jesus. Open your eyes, people. Let's get somebody good like Mark Rippett in there, huh, and see if they ever win another game. <laughs> nice talking to you. Good luck to us, pal. Bye. See ya. Yeah. And, and again, the pr- problem being that you're not dealing with knowledgeable sports fans. Whether it's football, they claim, oh, this is football country. Right. They don't know squat about football. They think they do, but most of them don't. There may be a handful. Hockey, forget it. They know Nothing. Nothing. The only thing they know is John Van Beesbrook. That's that's the one name they know. That's it. It's really sad. What do they know? What do, what do they know about besides snoring stuff for free? What do they know about? That they know well. And one thing, did he say no well? Well, it is Christmas. 147 at WIOD, has your mailbox seen better days? Are your neighbors putting for sale signs on your lawn because of the way that mailbox looks like a piece of, like a joke? Replace that worn-out box with a beautiful mailbox from the beautiful mailbox company because there's nothing worse than a worn-out box. From Walmart to curbside units, the beautiful mailbox company is the biggest selection of mailboxes you've ever seen. For, uh, you probably can't even imagine how big it is. Is that what I'm trying to say exactly? From maintenance-free mailboxes in cast aluminum, fancy pedestal boxes, sturdy concrete and plastics to Whimsical designs in wood and one-of-a-kind designs from uh, Iconocrete, including the five-foot-tall manatee box. Beautiful mailbox has exactly what you're looking for. And if you don't see it, they'll make one for you, just the way you want it. For the perfect housewarming gift, choose from a hand-painted ceramic or porcelain address plaque, too. Order now for the holidays. In fact, get your ass in there and pick one up. Or if you can't decide, get a beautiful mailbox gift certificate for that somebody special. Installations available in Dade, in Broward, and even in Palm Beach. Beautiful mailboxes, they're open for you Monday through Saturday from 10 to 4, and you'll find them right there on University Drive, just north of Griffin Road in prestigious Davie. Call them today and check it out. A great gift idea and a great something for yourself and your house, too. 475-2020. 475 2020 for beautiful mailboxes. 610 WIOD. Getting irritated yet? You Miami football fans are a bunch of douchebags. Oh! Oh my God. I'm wearing her clothes, her silk pantyhose, walking round in women's underwear. Oh my God. In the store, there's a teddy with little straps, like spaghetti. It holds me so tight, like handcuffs at night. 
Talking about women. I'm actually a lesbian. got you down. Beautiful. 153 at WIOD. That's still number one with 82 bullets. And Foul Mouth Dolphins is like number uh, two, just a half a bullet behind. Here's the mobile in Pompano. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. First off, Panthers are gods. Yeah. And I think if they go, so do you. I'm telling you, I love hockey. When Panthers first came here to Florida, everybody, you know, they, they, they gave support, whether they were there or at home, you know, they they did get the support. Not as much as they should have, but they did get support. And now they're number one. Yeah. The best in the league. No one can come close to them. Yeah. And Isaiah wants to sell the team. Mm hmm I mean, this guy, this guy doesn't have enough money, Neil. He needs to, he wants hey, to Hey, listen, more times are plans. tough, man. He only made $102 million in the market in one day last week. I'm saying. Times I mean, are getting really hard. I mean, this is a team that's number one and knows that they have everybody in Florida looking out for them. Because, I mean, we've never really had a number one team in a long time. Everybody is looking out for them? Uh, I mean... Everybody is looking out are. for them? Hey, I like am. Like those three or four or 5,000 empty seats that we have for most of our home games, we're all looking out for them? Hey, Neil, screw them. I'm talking about us. Yeah. I mean, you can't do nothing about the people that aren't going to come. What you can do is try to do everything you can do. And yeah. you do, Neil. I give you a lot of respect for that. Now, quick switch. Yeah. I want to tell all the people that think that... Dan Marino isn't a good quarterback just because he doesn't have one good game. This guy's got almost every record that there is to be gotten. And, 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 and what more do you want? You know what I'm saying? I mean, how are you going to blame one man for a whole team? Well, he threw an interception, don't you understand? Yeah, He's supposed yeah, to be perfect. He threw he one is. interception, and that's the only thing they remember. Of course, they don't remember. They don't remember that Trace Armstrong jumped offside, and that turned the whole game around. They forget about that. Oh. They forget about the uh, fact that Buffalo ran for 208 yards, and Thurman Thomas, most of it, right through that great yeah. Miami defensive line. They that's forget right. all about that. Yeah, but, uh, but Marino throws one interception, and right away he's a bum. Even though Kelly threw a major interception, and they had a major fumble, and they gave the Dolphins 10-point gift, gift points at the beginning of the second half. Nobody right. remembers that either. That's right. Well, yeah, Ten gift chance. points is the only thing that even let them back into the game. Of course. But this is the Dolphins. This is the team that gave Terrell Buckley the game ball because he made one, made one play. One that's away. right. That's it. At the end of the game. And listen, you know, it was an important play, but how are you going to back everything up on one play at the end of the game that if they would have played different in the middle of the game, they wouldn't even have had to give the game ball to him? And let me say one other thing about Keith Byers. I don't know if you remember that after Buffalo went ahead 20-13. to 13, Yeah. And uh, Marino led that drive downfield, yeah. and Miami came back and tied it up. Do you remember the great catch? Marino led him to the outside, and yeah. Keith Byers comes out of the backfield and goes down and makes that unbelievable over-the-shoulder catch. That's right. Uh, that the, well, the, probably was the biggest play of that drive, That's but nobody right. remembers anything about Keith no, Byers. Of course not. They don't remember the last drive, how Dan Marino got intercepted, yeah. how the defense couldn't stop the, him. These, these fans don't even deserve the Dolphins because most of them don't even understand the game that they're watching. They know nothing. You know, I mean, listen. They're so hooked on the Buffalo Bills been at a Super Bowl four times, so Miami should at least go there five because we're better than them. But they got to understand, just because they don't win one game, the whole city, the newspapers, everybody comes down on them. How does that make them look? You know, how does that make them feel when they come to practice? When everybody says, well, the fact oh, they is, they suck. suck. They do suck. But. They got, of, they got a bunch of they got about a heartless bunch of crybabies. They got about a half a dozen guys out there that really put out, and they got the rest of them are a bunch of crybabies, a bunch of spoiled assholes, overpaid assholes. That's right. That's right. And they're running from the papers. They use them as excuses. And listen, I listen? like aggressive play as much as the next person. Yeah. But for Brian Cox to punch somebody because he got past you, you you whip, you couldn't hold him down. I right, now look, I met Brian Cox a couple of times. I thought he was a nice enough guy. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to go pull something stupid out of just because you can't maintain the play. 
You shouldn't be hitting him so. No, he can't, man- he can't maintain his composure. That's the problem. And what are you getting so excited about? Suck my dick. Exactly. Here's Boca on a purple line. Hello. Hey, I didn't want to talk about the Dolphins or anything, but that other guy said Marino doesn't, uh, it's all his fault. But I'm not a Dolphins fan or anything, but if you put Dan Marino on San Francisco or Dallas, I don't think they even lose a game. Right, because, that's right. You know, that is unbelievable. And, and when that other guy said, what are you talking about, drop passes, that guy that got all bent out of shape, my God, Irving Fryer's dropped so many passes yeah. right in his hands this year. It's unbelievable. I, ba- I bet you even Rock Hudson never dropped so many balls right in his hands. Marino puts it right in between the numbers all right. the time. Exactly. He, I mean, he's not uh, 100% all the time, but neither is Michael Jordan, but everybody's into it can make mistakes. And of course, I noticed that none of the local fans were complaining about the fact that Steve Bono started the Kansas City game who had no business even playing that game right. for one down with a bad arm who couldn't throw the ball a foot. And no, everybody was very happy about that and saying, oh, hi, we won a great game. We were great. What's what the hell were they? What game, what game were they watching? I would like to know. What, what were they watching? What's going to happen when Marino retires? You're going to hear a pin drop in Joe Robbie. Yep. Now, let me right. ask you a question. It all now, Bernie's going to be out there. I'm telling you, the yeah. wounded duck, it's in. The mighty ducks and the wounded duck, it's you in. Know, uh, the thing is, is uh, Shula has a lot of loyalty to his personnel, but if you looked at San Francisco, they picked up Mark Tressman, who knows the Miami Dolphins, and they picked up Pete Carroll, who knows the Dolphins. Why couldn't the Dolphins have picked up these two young guys, bring new blood, and teach fundamentals football to these guys? Up well, up? you don't understand in Miami, it's against a lot of pick up young guys. In San Francisco, it's okay. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Uh, I guess 32 o'clock. I wanted to talk about a Corvette real quickly. Yeah. I'm very disappointed. I got my Corvette two years ago. What are you disappointed about? Because I want to trade it in, and they only want to give me 21000 on a vehicle worth 40 now. It lost so much on its value. I'm like, I'm in a position either to get rid of it now or get rid of it next year when it really I never goes. heard of such a thing. I, got, I'm get, I always get great trade-in on my vets. I don't know. And they told me, well, it's only worth $21,000. I was like, no chance. No chance. Unless it's a hunk of crap. How many miles are on it? 20,000 miles. They it, told me because it's a six-speed, it's the value is not that oh, good. Oh, it's a six-speed. Well, what can I tell you? I'll go to Tropical. The hell with Danny Marino and Marooney. Oh, so in other words, you didn't go to Tropical Chevrolet? No. Well, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Well, I'll go there. I'll now I understand month. why you're getting the bum deal. Will you get over there and tell Jack Lebo I told, uh, told him either or else? Jack Leroy? Jack Lebo. Jack Lebo. Tell him to either do it right or else. I'll do it after New Year's. Okay. Take care. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Boy, oh boy, no wonder. He went to that Morani. So anyway, center one total is 90059 bucks. We thank you profusely, everybody that's really helping us out. And of course, you're helping yourself out because you're getting some great stuff on there. Let me tell you, these are the best CDs this year. Even a Rick and Suds might be worth looking at. I'm not necessarily saying buying, but looking at. And the best of Neil and the Unplugged Part 2. And the Phil Henry, which, uh, needless to say, the Phil Henry CD is selling out everywhere. They can't even keep it in stock. That's how great it is. So head for borders or just head for the border and have a great life. Still the only radio station that doesn't suck. WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD.